Is it accurate? And secondly, who wrote the Bible and where did it come from? Because if the chronology isn't accurate, obviously it did not come from God because this God would be perfect. And if we can establish that God didn't write it, obviously we've established that it did not come from God. So those are the two topics that we'll be dealing with. And uh, I hope everybody learns something, get something from the information that we present here. And regardless what you came here to believe in the first place, just have an open mind. And just let the truth win the day. Just let the truth have the, have the last say. It's not about what I think. It's not about what this brother think. It's about what is and what is not. Period. What is and what is not. Truth is truth. Everybody say they're searching for the truth. Everybody's searching for but the truth. But everybody won't accept the truth when they hear it. Because sometimes it hurts. It does. Sometimes it hurts. But is the Bible the divinely inspired word of God, and is everything in it accurate and true? That's, that, that's the topic. Absolutely. One hundred percent agree that. with uh, Matt's introduction. This is what we'll be discussing today. Uh, Matt's coming from his particular side, and I'm coming from my particular side, and uh, we're going to bring what we believe to be the truth. Uh, Rick Pearson, the guy who just walked in, he will be the mediator. He will be the guy to explain the guidelines and the rules to this particular meeting that we have in this particular debate. And uh, we go ahead and get started whenever. So you have to get started with us. Well, we were filling the time, man. Yeah, but then the other people sitting there, they don't want you to sit there and look okay. at it. Right. Ain't nothing to look at. I got to talk, you know? All right. So, I mean, uh, ready right Yeah, here? you can get your introduction. We can yeah. flip the coins, and we can get down to the business. Yeah, really? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. where's Larry James at? Okay. Well, look, well, you got to forgive me because I forget stuff, so I, I, I write everything down and my mind's kind of bad my memory is out of us. So, um, I know me, I, I I don't consider myself religious at all. I'm a, I'm a truth seeker. I, I, I'm seeking the truth, you know. And uh, it, it's times that I, I read the Bible and I come to parts of the Bible where it's like, that just seems too untrue, man. You know, like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna take this for example, like Adam and Eve story, living 900 years and stuff, they, like they 900 years old, and, or the, the, the story of Noah, it rained in 40 days and 40 nights, and, and I mean, how does that happen, man? You know, so, I can ask this guy here, Blackburn, and he'll tell me, without a shadow of a doubt, it happened. It's, it's evidence of it. <clears throat> and he'll tell me, you know, things like the Bible is the divine word of God. Everything in it is true. You know, so I can ask Matt about it. Matt, like, wrong. Never happened. Uh, so, it, it confuses me, you know, uh, I, I'm just, I just want the truth. <clears throat> so we're about to flip this coin, and uh, I guess we're going to get the truth out of it, man. Okay, so, uh, uh, can you explain the rules, Rick, before we uh, get started? The rules is, uh, during the debate, we're not going to have no questions from the audience. We're going to let these two go head to head, all right? Uh, Y'all gonna have your time to ask questions. And, uh, I'm freestyling off the phone. Um, anything else I missed out, Blackburn? Hmm? Anything Tom, I missed out? Tom, 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 Didn't y'all agree on 15 or 20? 20 minutes? Yes. It's 20 minutes? 20 minutes apiece. For each okay. topic. And then we're gonna, how long for the other buck? I think it was what, five or ten minutes? Five, five, five and then minutes. And we go to the easy. audience for the question. And then we go to the for the question and answer. Just a yeah. And after we do the question and answer with the audience, we're going to deal with topic number two. Who wrote the Bible and where did it come from? Same time frame or plot. Moderator, keep the time 
Yeah, you know, so just remember what's said during these presentations because you will have opportunity to ask your questions. Y'all have any questions? Write it down. Don't nobody get in their feelings. You know what I'm saying? Because after I flip this coin, it's war time. They they head to head. Don't get in your feelings and get mad. You know, get the time. Uh, what time is it now? Six ten. I know all of us. Five minutes. Five minutes for what? When he says six thirty, we was gonna start. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go handy bit, handy bit. I'll write a few. Twenty minutes even. If I set a few things up, just like we can go for it. Got it. Well, we gonna wait till six thirty, like we agreed upon. You know, okay. but when it starts, it's, it's, it's go time. It's go time. <laughs> round one. <laughs> oh, it ain't round one yet. Let's flip that coin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm trying to wait until people get started and then I'm going to sit down, but I just want to make sure I catch them. What are you I'm just playing. I'm just joking. Huh? No, not at all. Turn it off a little bit. Yeah. That's when we can go first. Let's go. All right. Right now. Of course, when you're discussing the chronological order of the Bible, you have uh, the archaeological and you have the uh, historical. So I don't want to give you guys anything that you can't hear, smell, see, or touch. I don't want to give you my beliefs. I don't want to give you my concepts. I want to only give you things that you can go and visit touch, see, and verify today. So, question is, is there anything in the biblical text that can be verified today? Is there anything related to some of the stories that Rick was talking about that could actually be verified today? And that's the question of the day. I believe so. Not only do I believe so, it's been plenty of things that's been found that can be verified today. The problem is, when you have secular, archaeologists and historians, if they see something and a little grain of salt will mess up the whole timeline. So if you're going by their particular timeline, then of course you're going to lose out on all the evidence that you could have used to prove and verify the Bible. For an example, the easiest person to prove in regards to the Old Testament, one of the easiest persons to prove in regards to the Old Testament is Moses. Reason being, because Moses uh, had what you would call a exodus. And I'm pretty sure you guys heard the story. Anybody that's not familiar with the story of the exodus? Okay, the exodus is a story about Moses being a child, uh, being growing up in Egypt, and it was a particular pharaoh at that time that was killing. What's his name? The pharaoh? Yeah. I don't have his name. I didn't know the story. I know the place. Okay, but it was a pharaoh. I, I'm, I'm going to get more into that. But the pharaoh was killing babies for a particular reason. And the reason being is because the Israelites was growing so popular, I mean growing so much in this particular region, that he decided to start killing not just the babies, but male babies. So that's, that means something. I'm saying that because that means something. Okay, so he was killing the male babies, little bitty babies. So. Moses' mother put him into a basket in the Nile River. And from there, Pharaoh's daughters, one of Pharaoh's daughters found Moses. And when uh, the daughter found Moses, she became uh, his foster mother. So he was raised in royalty. He was raised up. One particular day, he ended up getting into some trouble, and he left. And he went to stay in the land of Midian. Midian. And he stayed in Midian for a while, maybe 40 years, 40 years. Then from there, he went back, based on his encounter with God, to go get the Israelites, which was God's people. Okay, okay. 
Okay. So that's the story of Moses. Okay, I appreciate you filling in. On that. Okay, no problem. Uh, if you go by a secular timeline, they'll have Moses somewhere, and you guys are, do you guys understand BC? Yes, sir. In regards to time? Okay, so if you're doing BC, this would be 19, 18, 17, 15, 14, 13, 12, 1100 BC. Uh, as time goes forward, the, the number gets smaller. So, in this particular biblical timeline, you have the Exodus, according to secular and historians' account, somewhere in here. But that's not true. And the reason it's there is because of a particular verse. In Exodus chapter uh, 6, verses 1, I believe it was saying the Israelites are, was building the place of Ramsey. So, People automatically believe, if you go look at the Ten Commandment movies, the Pharaoh was Ramsey. Uh, the Pharaoh that... Which one? Ramsey the second. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's right, Greg. Yeah, we can't ask any questions until the, until the end, guys. No questions. Yeah, just listen. I don't mind answering questions, but we do have rules. So can you just write them down? He got his time. So with Ramsey being this particular Pharaoh <coughs> and being this... Pop one of Egypt's most powerful pharaohs, every time you hear about a biblical account of the Ten Commandments or the Exodus, they throw Ramsey out there. But Ramsey in the Bible is just a marker for a particular place and where this particular Exodus took place. In other words, he didn't have an encounter with Pharaoh Ramsey. He had an encounter in the city of Ramsey, but Ramsey wasn't around. So what, that sounds, kind of, that sounds funny. What did that mean? When they was looking for this particular place, the name of the place where the Exodus took place is called Avaris. And you guys will have to forgive me. I, don't, I may not pronounce the words exactly correct, but my spelling is a little better. But Avaris is underneath the city of Ramsey. So if you wanted to find this location, you have to go to what? The city of Ramsey. Because after the Exodus took place, it didn't take long for Ramsey to come in and start building his city on top of this place. So this was, Ramsey in the Bible is just a location marker. So the Exodus, according to secular uh, and historians, took place in the 12th century, uh, 1200s. And uh, let me get this to somebody because we still got people coming. So, with that being said, that still haven't proved that Moses existed. Now, how can we prove that Moses existed? If you go to what uh, secular uh, historians are looking for Moses and his existence, they're going to say, well, we can't find nothing over there. We don't have no clue. Moses never existed. It's a fairy tale. But if you was to come in this timeline, in this particular location, guess what? You'll find plenty of evidence of Moses' existence. Not only will you find evidence of Moses' existence, you're going to find evidence of the Exodus. Now, how do I find evidence of the Exodus? Well, in the Exodus, they had 10 particular plagues that God used to convince Pharaoh to let his people go. And these particular uh, plagues were not only uh, what got Pharaoh to start chasing the Israelites and free up the Israelites, but this particular plague was also documented by let me get right here, Rick. And again, this is supposed to be y'all copy, but I'm just going to, it's only a document, Matt. <laughs> it's an eyewitness account to the plagues in Egypt. And this was written, and it's located in the museum. Again, I'm telling you, the only things you can go is see, smell, hear, and touch. If it can't affect your five senses, I didn't even, I didn't even bring it. But this Apur, his name is Apur, document was describing what was going on in Egypt during that particular time. This Apur document is based in this timeline, not this one. So that's why they ride it off. That's just a coincidence. Because in this particular time, with the secular archaeologists, nothing like that was going on. So Apur, if you read Exodus 
chapter 7, verse 20, all the waters, one of, one of the plays was the water turned to blood. I pulled, witnessed that. He actually said the river is blood. Then if you go down to Exodus 9, verse 25, and hell uh, destroyed the plants in the field. Trees are destroyed, no fruit, no herbs are found. That's what I pulled wrote. Another one, fire came along the ground. The uh, four so gates, columns, and walls are consumed by fire. Uh, another one. The fire ran along the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Our poor wrote, the land is not light. And this is all, this is all documented evidence of someone witnessing something going on in Egypt. Very similar to the biblical plagues. And here is the one of them all. And this also goes on to my next point. And it came to pass, this is Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, notice he didn't use a name, that sat on his throne until the firstborn of the captives that was in the dungeon. Then if you read what I pull wrote, the children of princes are dashed against the walls, the children of princes are cast out in the street. And he was pretty much talking about the dead kids and the dead firstborn. You are witness, this is the actual document. Again, something you can go and verify with your senses. Apu is not in any case a reliable guide to the early Egyptian history, given that it is known only from a much later New Kingdom text preserved on a single fragment papyrus dating from around 1250 BC. In the poem, Apu, a name typically of the Ten period. Minutes. Ten minutes, appreciate it. Complains that the world has been turned upside down. And here's another one. A woman who had not a single box now has furniture. What did that mean? The slaves was given all of the Egyptian riches, prize, possessions when they left. And that's also found in the book of Exodus. But again, I didn't upload that particular verse. So you have something, something is going on in Egypt during this time, and somebody is eyewitnessing writing this stuff down. And then this document is found right around here. <coughs> now you have... What is another evidence of the Exodus? You have, they went to a particular place called Mount Sinai. Everybody's familiar with that, Mount Sinai, right? This is the only mountain in the whole world, scientists, is complex, trying to figure out why is the top of this mountain dark, black, burned to a tip, burned to a crisp. This is the, if you get on Google Earth right now, you'll find the real Mount Sinai and it'll be burned to a crisp. Not only that, let me pull up another document real quick. Oh, this is. Oh, no, nope, that's not it. No, nope, that's not it. Okay. Okay, well, we'll get back on that. Let me, because uh, I only got 10 minutes. Eight, now, if you keep on rewinding, Mount Sinai, not, not only in, to this very day, if you go to the, uh, the Red Sea, they have actual markers indicating from Solomon himself the route that the Egyptians took, what the Israelites took to get away from Pharaoh. And that's something else you can find on Google Earth. 2016, you can still find that today. And these are markers that Solomon has put out there himself to verify this is where they went in, this is where they went out. Not only that, you also have chariot wheels of that particular dynasty in the Red Sea. You only, not only that, you also have uh, uh, altars that was built at the bottom of the same exact mountain. So all these things that I'm speaking about, I was supposed to pass you out documents, but they're all still to this very day can be verified. You can go up there and touch and smell here, all of it. Now we have, if we rewind a little bit further along our timeline, we're going to get up somewhere we're going to run into Noah. The flood. Now, not too many people believe the flood. But again, my question to you guys is, where did Egypt start from? What is the origin of Egypt? The Hebrew name for one of Noah's grandsons is Mazaram. 
Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. It is no coincidence that the modern Egyptians call themselves Mash, M-I-S-R, which is the derivative of Mazaram, according to the book of Genesis, Noah's grandson. Mazaram is the father of the Egyptians. So, to this very day, they are still referred to as Noah's grandson's name. So why is that important? Because, again, the Bible explains how after this great flood, only eight people got survived. And from that eight people, you have uh, six, three couples that was able to start producing what we have today, the world's population. So, it, today, Noah's grandson is the origin for the Egyptians. And I can't find the document, but the main evidence is, of course, water destruction. There's no tree, and trees are live today, there's no tree that's over 5,000 years old that's living as of right now. None whatsoever. Nothing on top of planet Earth is older than 5,000 years old uh, that's living. And you also have locations on two different sides of planet Earth with giant pyramids underneath the water. So how did that happen? Did, that, did they go down there and build a pyramid on the water? Absolutely not. It's evidence everywhere to uh, denote that it, without a shadow of a doubt, it was a flood that took place. You have civilizations that's underwater. Around the same time, God was saying the flood was going to take place. So. <coughs> When you have these pyramids and these giant structures in these cities underwater, you got five minutes. we got to try to figure out how and why did these cities, did these pyramids get put underwater? No one is able to figure it out. Now, how do you get six billion people from six people, from three couples? How do you get six billion people? I know that everyone thinks that's, you know, it's crazy, that's not going to happen. But if we was to go according to secular and the scientific route that people have been around for millions of years, let me just pull up that document. Four minutes. Thanks. I'm going to read some of this. Six billion people live on planet Earth. That sounds like a lot of people. However, that could fit all into an area of the size of England with no more than 20 square meters each. Many of us live in cities, so we have the impression that the world is bursting with people. However, much of the world is scarcely populated. Nevertheless, many wonder how the population could have grown to six billion from Noah's family who survived the flood that wiped out everyone else about <coughs> 4,500 years ago. When you do the figures, it confirms the biblical truth that everyone on earth today is a descendant of Noah's sons and daughters. Not only that, but if people would have been here much longer and there was no global flood on Noah's day, there would sure be a lot more people than they are, or there should be a lot more humans remains. Now, people have problems understanding growth rates of these things. When the population doubles, it's from 16 to 32. It does not seem like much. But when it doubles from 3 billion to 6 billion, it seems like a lot more. To illustrate the story of the inventor of chess, well, we're going to skip that one because I'm running out of time. The population grows when more people are born than die. The current growth rate of the world population is, here's a key point, 1.7 per year. That's the current rate. In other words, for every 100 million people, 1.7 million are added every year. Many assume that the modern medicines, this is just talking about, population growth in non-industrialized countries is like 3%. We actually have one of the lowest population growth at 1.7. Okay, keep moving on. If we was to get to, let's see, here we go. Okay, in the next generation, Sham had 14 grandsons, Ham 28, Japet 23, or 130 children in total. That's an average of 8.1 per couple. 
These figures are consistent with God's command to be fruitful and multiply and, feed the, and fill the earth. Let us take the average of all births in the first two post-flood generations. That's 8.53 children per couple. Let me skip down. That represents a population growth rate of 3.7 per year, a doubling time of about 19 years. So I got to get into it. Got a minute and a half. Get to, oh, here we go. Evolutionists claim it's going to probably tie into what I'm talking about, how the world started over, that mankind evolved from apes about a million years ago. If the population had grown at just 0.01% per year, then doubling every 7,000 years, there will be 10 to the 43rd power people today. That's a number with 43 zeros after it. So if we was to say that we've been on planet Earth for 100,000 years, we would be nowhere near the number of 6 billion. We would be easily 20, 30, 40 billion people on planet Earth as of right now. So of course, in closing, time does go by pretty fast. Uh, the evidence of Moses is not being presented to the world as it should be. They're denying the, effect, the effects of the exodus. They're saying that Noah never existed. But mathematically, if you was to go by scientific, uh, scientific formulas, we, will be, we wouldn't have no space. And if you was to go and find all the archaeological and historical facts of Five, Moses, six, yeah. hmm? Five, six, if you would find all the historical and archaeological facts of Moses, it's very much very well true. Okay. So. No further ado, my time just went up. <coughs> Get back got, on it. You got the mic. You ready to start? All right, this is not about anyone's religious beliefs. Okay? I'm not debating God. I'm debating if everything in the Bible is accurate and true. So the first place I'm going to go, because I'm not going to waste any time with this, you know? I don't want nobody getting their feelings. We just want to deal with the truth, okay? Uh, in the Bible that this guy says is the divinely inspired word of God and everything in it is accurate and true. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18, it reads, And he said unto them, Jesus speaking to his disciples, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. This guy, in my name, in Jesus' name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, other languages. This brother should be able to speak in languages that he has not learned. And they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now see, what I brought with me today is a litmus test. Uh -huh. Because people talk a lot. We don't have to talk nobody into it. I got something deadly right here. Right there. We can end the whole debate oh. if this brother was to drink this and not get hurt. I don't want nothing bad to happen to you and we on camera and there's people in here. If I force that upon you, it's premeditated murder or it's aggravated assault. Uh -huh. But anybody that believes, yeah. it's like you should be able to take up serpents and if you drink any deadly thing, it will not harm you. I have something deadly, and as they say now, I'm just going to leave that right there. Man. I, I, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to leave that right there, and I want y'all to continue to look at that, the entire debate, because I know the brother, and I don't want you to drink that, brother. I'm not I don't want you to drink that. <laughs> I know you're not. But anybody that believes should be able to do it. If the Bible is the divinely inspired word of God, and if everything, I don't want to hear about the, um, the few things he pointed out. I'm not going to chase this brother yeah. from Genesis okay. to Revelation. Yeah. I'm not about to do it. I'm going to point out the things in the Bible that I'm saying is not right, and I got something right there. The brother ain't stood Jesus. up yet. Jesus. The debate should be over, but uh -huh. I know y'all want to learn. Okay. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about chronology, chronology is the arrangement of events or dates in the order of their occurrence. So the question is, yes. are the arrangement of events or dates in the order of their occurrence found in the Bible accurate? Did the events in the Bible happen when they said it did? Now, I'm glad the brother put that up there. Yeah. Because he said what secular people are saying is that Moses, the time of Moses was around 1250. But if y'all look at the paper that I marked out, I already put oh. down that um, the Exodus, Moses, is around 1444 BCE. 
You want to know why? They can. Uh, you need. She got. Harry, they yeah. cannot get around the six thousand year period of the Bible. Everybody because got one in already. In the Bible, and I got it at the bottom. In the Bible, it explicitly gives you a time period mm -hmm. from Adam all the way to Solomon. Woo. From Adam all the way to Solomon, and all you have to do is add it up. Mm -hmm. So they are going to put Moses exactly where I put him because I went in there and I added it up. But we are going to see if this makes sense. So I want y'all to just turn, I, I apologize for not having that, but just turn to the first page. Okay, I'm going to give him Solomon. <coughs> I'm, I'm going to give him that. Okay. And they say Solomon was around the 10th century BCE. Now when you look in that chronology, let's say when we're going from 0 to 100 BCE, from 0 to 1 is the 1st century. From 1 to 2 is the 2nd century. From 2 to 3 is the 3rd century. So when they say that Solomon was around the 10th century BCE, they're talking about from 900 BCE to 1000 BCE. Yeah. I'll give him that. He can have that. And, and they do have some archaeology where they say that they found this right here, the city of Giza, that proves that Solomon existed. Uh -huh. So if we take their word for it, then that will put Adam exactly where I said it, and I'll go into this later. If anybody got a question, I'll show you exactly how to add it up, but the brother didn't already agree with me, so y'all should understand. Adam is around 4,100 and uh, 12 BCE. Okay. And so what I want y'all to do next, turn to the next page for me. Cause we're gonna try to get through this thing. Yeah. What you are looking at is what's called the normal palette. Teach, teach. Okay? The creator or the founder of Egypt Hotel. was no Mizraim. Hotel. It was a man named Norma, and they have Norm the on the normal palette. Norm it's a depiction great. of him subduing his enemies and uniting the two lands, what they call Lower Kemet and Upper Kemet. Teach. Now this dates back to around 3000 BCE. 3000 BCE. Now both of our timelines add up. The um 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 the Exodus um would have been around 1444 BCE. Uh -huh. Abraham would have been around 2164 BCE, and the flood would have been around 2456 BCE. So the founder of Kemet Woo! would have had to have come after the flood. So how mm. can the real founder of Kemet normal? Jeez. How can he be at 3000 BCE Jeez. if the Bible says that the flood happened at 2456 BCE? Ooh, How? Up, How? That's like a 600 year difference. 600 year. And when we're dealing with chronology, we're dealing with dates. Do say you want to show uh, 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 facts and never did something you can see, yeah, touch, taste, smell. He said it. You can touch the normal pattern oh, yes, and you can, can see it. And I want y'all to make note because <laughs> this is going to be very important later. You see at the top of it, you see the two cows. Those <laughs> represent the goddess had thought. You oh, see sir. right under the um one the, the the cow on the right, you see the falcon. That represents the god hey root. So not only do you have normal unifying the two lands, a proof of this, uh -huh. in 3000 BCE, you have evidence of their mythology already in place. So even before 3000 BCE, you have the Kemet people uh, um, organizing, developing, and coming up with ways of thought, trains of thought. How can you have the god hey root at 3000 BCE if they wasn't already talking about it at 4000 BCE? Mm. Adam is supposed to be at 4000 BCE. They never talked about Adam. No, they didn't. The Egyptians don't talk about Adam. And this is not about nobody religion. It's not about nobody belief. Uh, 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 just excuse the passion, but I'm passionate about Jeez, this. Bro. Turn to the next page. Yeah, right there, you have a tomb that was found at Abaddon. Take that you want to talk about what you can take, smell, taste, smell, take and touch? Mess. This was at 2900 BCE, Ooh. again before the flood. Don't add up. Again before the flood. Don't add so up. how is it Mizraim? How? I propose, my premise Damn. is, it's history and mythology mixed in with the Bible. But until you accept that, you will never really understand what it is that the Bible is trying to tell you. You can't let nobody tell you that everything that's inside of this book is the divinely inspired word of God and it's all true. Or the brother would have got up and drunk that. Hotel. He know it. Hotel. He know it. Don't lie to the people, brother. Don't lie Turn to, to the next page. Right there we have a statue of the God men. This is dated to around 3100 to 3000 BCE. Again, development. Proof, archaeological evidence that the Egyptian people was already there, uh -huh. already building, long before the flood. But if the Egyptian people came from Mizraim, that came after the flood, yeah. how do you have the evidence before the flood? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's not real. It's mythology. You have individuals. Now, it was an actual, some Israelite, it was some people that have a history. 
And just like any ancient culture, they tied their history in with mythological uh, uh, characters and entities. Everybody did it. You can prove that the Greek civilization is real, but does that mean Hercules is real? Zeus is real. Poseidon is real. Hades is real. The Romans. You have plenty. I can prove the Romans existed all day. But does that mean that Remus and Romulus suckled at the breast of a she-wolf? Teach. And if I can show this evidence of Egypt, does that mean Asar is real? Aset is real? Hey, Ru is real? Mm. Under this brother uh, uh, premise, everybody in Egypt is real as too. Cause I can prove the Egyptians were there. I can prove that. Now what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go to what's called the New Oxford Anointed Bible. It's a study Bible that they do use in colleges. And I'm going to just uh, 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 read a few things real quick. To show, you, to show you that what some of the scholars are saying. Because we have to be able, as adults, we have to be able to establish between uh, 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 fiction and fact, okay? It says, the early chapters of Genesis deal with prehistory and are largely myth mythical. In these Israelite expressions of the origins of the world, of society, and of civilization, the principal agent is the God of Israel. And although intended as a prologue to a larger historical narrative, mm -hmm. they are not historical in any modern sense. That is, they do not accurately represent what the archaeological record shows to have taken place, whether in terms of chronology, mm -hmm. or origin of species, or a universal fluid. Okay? This is what this is what the scholars are saying. Yeah. The people that's on the ground digging up the stuff that he's talking about. <laughs> this is what they are saying, and I can yeah. prove it to you. To what go. I'm gonna go to next, and one of my next points. This is a book called "Digging Up the Bible" by Moshe Perelman. Man, the man, the man like name is Moshe. Probably Jewish. Probably Jewish itself. And with these guys, it's a lot of proof for a lot of this stuff in the Bible, right? They digging it up. They digging up the facts. That's uh -huh. where I got um where they say um they proved that Solomon existed because they had evidence of a city that he rebuilt. I don't want I'm not gonna dispute that. You can have it. You can have it, but that means that Adam the first man lived six thousand years ago. That's you minutes. cannot have that. So what I'm gonna show y'all what his this is what this dude scholar said. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been studying the people that dug up oh. the stuff that he's using to prove, okay? Uh, what I want y'all to do, because I'm, I, I don't want to run out of time, so I'm going to skip over a few things. Uh, I want y'all to go to the page where it says Ancient Jericho, 142 on the bottom. It says 6,850, and I'm going to try to hit this real quick. Because 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it really ain't that long. I want y'all to see it. It should, uh, I'm sorry, what is that? on the bottom of it, it says 142 <coughs> in, in my pack. Okay. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to have to skip around a little bit. So I'm not taking y'all in, in, in order no more. It's going to look like this right here. I want y'all to get there with me, okay? Now, they were looking for the city of Jericho because they've already proven several things in the Bible. So they were looking for the city of Jericho so that they could verify the story of Joshua. They wanted to verify that Joshua um, 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 conquered Jericho and they were looking for the destroyed wall. Now, this is what the biblical archaeologists said. Mm -hmm. Watch this. They've proven other stuff in the Bible. Right? And you want to use what they've proven to support your claims of the Bible. But guess what else they said? Where then was the Jericho wall of Joshua's time? British archaeologist John Garstang, who resumed excavations at Jericho from 1930 to 1936, found many things, but not that. The sensational discovery at Jericho was made in our own generation by Kathleen Kenyon in her comprehensive dig from 1952 to 1958. Miss Kenyon, now check this out, y'all. This is the nail in the coffin. Miss Kenyon uh -oh. realized that what she had found was very ancient, probably Neolithic, but only when organic material found with it was subjected to the radioactive carbon 14 test was the date determined. It was 6,850 BCE, plus or minus some 200 years, which makes the structures about 9,000 years old in Jericho, the oldest city in the world. I think y'all missed what I said, 6,850 BCE. So the biblical archaeologists that are proving the Bible yeah. has proven that it was people long before the 4,112 BCE that Adam was supposed to live. Uh -huh. The same people who's proving it. The same people who's digging up, oh, this proves Solomon. Oh, this proves Hezekiah. This proves Zechariah. This proves David. Uh-oh, this proves that it was people on the planet long before Adam. Uh-oh, digging up the Bible. And this, is, this ought to be his. If he read this book, he'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm not saying this, I'm not trying to, you know, step on nobody's toes. I don't want to make nobody upset. It's only about the truth. 
And if I don't say the truth like this, y'all y'all not gonna think I don't y'all think I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm making stuff up. But this are the these are the biblical archaeologists, man. I'm not just quoting some Egyptologists. Yeah. These are the people that's proving the stuff. They probably the ones that dug up his information about Moses. Why don't you bring this out, brother? Or why haven't you picked up that? I'm gonna leave uh, that right there. I want y'all to look at that again. Yeah, look, take a look. He hasn't touched it. No, he haven't, man. He went no why? There, man. <laughs> and I'm not yelling at y'all, but why, man? Why? Because we 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 miss out on so much uh -huh. when we fail to just accept it's history in the Bible, but it's also mythology in the Bible. And you will never understand exactly what it is that the Bible is trying to teach you until you accept that. Now, before I go, I want to take this brother out into some extremely deep waters. That's what I'm going to do next. What I want y'all to do is uh, uh, just hold off, hold off for just one second. Like I said, I apologize. I didn't have the... I didn't have a presence of mind to set one of those up, so I just got to go to my books. But I got my books, and I'm 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 going to find it. I'm going to find it. You got six uh, minutes, man. I got six minutes. Six. All right, cool, cool. Take That's time, good. Man. That's good. I'm gonna take my time, brother. Give me my time. Don't cut me out. All right. Uh, let me see. Thirty, thirty-nine. I've already uh quoted this book a couple of times. Uh, not thirty-nine, thirty-two. That's good. Okay, again, this is the Oxford History of Ancient Egypt by Ian Shaw. The last page in the packet that I gave y'all, I made a bibliography of the books that I'm quoting, the people that's in it, uh, um, the author of the books, and the page number that I'm getting this stuff from. I didn't have a picture to go to coincide with this, but I'm just going to read y'all a few things. In Egypt, the earliest Neolithic cultures, remember, Neolithic was the same thing that they said in here about that Joshua time, because Neolithic represents a specific point in time, okay? This is very valid to chronology. In Egypt, the earliest Neolithic cultures emerged in the Western Desert. It should, however, uh, this culture has been identified as Neolithic purely on the basis of the evidence for cattle herding. The Saharan Neolithic is, therefore, completely different from the Neolithic culture that emerged at about the same time in Israel, in its holy land. This all came about around the same time. Five well, the minutes. phrase, good, Neolithic economy is a synonym for the process whereby agriculture was in, uh, introduced and later joined by animal domestication. Two main periods can be distinguished by the early Neolithic, 8,800 to 6,800 BCE, and a more recent period consisting of middle 6,500 to 5,100 BCE, and late Neolithic, 5,100 to 4,700 BCE. Site E-75-6, around 7,000 BCE. Adam is at 4,000. This is 3,000 years before Adam, okay? 3,000, not Dang. one, not two, 3,000. Really? Is one of the most interesting early Neolithic localities at Napta Playa. The site consists of three or four rows of huts, probably each representing different short lines of the lake. Uh, uh, it was during the middle and late Neolithic periods, 6,600 to 5,100 and 5,100 to 4,700 BC, respectfully, that the human occupation of the Western Desert reached its peak. And they say that, um, um, like I say, it emerged at around the same time in Israel because you have two separate archaeologists and two separate sites in two different localities coming to the same conclusion. There were people on the planet before 4,000 BCE. Hotel. You can't, man, we cannot teach our kids that the first man nah. and woman lived 6,000 years ago. Oh, no. Nah. We're doing them a disservice. It's not about your religion. It's not about God. It's about the Bible. Is everything in it accurate and true? He still hasn't touched that. And it, all you got to do is believe. Yeah. It did, the Bible didn't say faith. only the pastors can drink it. Uh -huh. Only the seen. bishops can drink uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. Only the prophets can drink it. Anybody. <laughs> anybody can do it. And it not, he don't even have to die. It's, a, it not, it's not even going to harm you. You're not going to be queasy. Yeah. You're not going to have a headache. You know, you, you're right. not going to want to vomit. You see what I'm saying? So I don't have to Jeez. talk you into it. You see, I'm giving y'all this because I know y'all came to get some information. The Egyptian civilization did not start after the flood if the flood happened around, there you go. around 2,456 BCE. And at the bottom, I gave y'all all biblical scriptures to define my timeline. There is exactly 3,148 years from Adam to Solomon, and there's nothing you can do to get around it. That's why they're going to leave Moses right there. Because if you move Moses further back, you've got to move Adam. 
If you move Moses to 2000 BCE, you got to move Adam. You got to move the Exodus. You got to move Abraham. You got to move the Tower of Babel. And get this, man, the, uh, the Tower of Babel happened 101 years after the flood. So you mean to tell me everybody on the I don't give a, I don't care about none of that. I don't care about none of that he just showed. You mean to tell me everybody in the world gets killed and 101 years later you not only have enough people to consider yourself the earth being populated but you can build a tower to heaven build a tower to heaven First, you got to have enough people, you got to produce enough people, and they have to get old enough to actually get the materials. Hotel. Right? So they have to get the materials, move the materials in place, and then build it. Some of the estimations on the Great Pyramids in Egypt is that maybe it took 20 years. Maybe it took 20 years to accomplish. So if you knock that 20 years off the 101, we're talking about 80 years. So these people have to grow up. You have a baby, it's going to take time before they can get involved in something like that. Those babies not building nothing until at least maybe 15. Oh, I give, I give them, give them 13. But then you're going to knock that 80 down some more. Well, and then you need time to build a tower to heaven. Abraham, they say Abraham existed. Get this, and I can prove it. Please ask the question. 292 years after the flood. After the flood, 292 uh, years. Let me try to hurry up and get this out, man. Uh, ooh wee, he gonna, he gonna skate. <laughs> he ain't that news. He ain't gonna skate. All right, nations of Abraham, uh, nations during Abraham's day. You had Egypt, Babylon, Ethiopia, the Kenites, the Canaanites, the Catamanites, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Rephamites, the Amorites, the Gergesites, the Jebusites, Shinar, Elisar, Elon, the King of Tadel, Sodom, Gomorrah, Atma, Zelboam, Bela, Zoar, the uh, uh, Amal Am Amalekites, the Philistines, the Canaanites, the Syrians, the Assyrians, the Ionians and the Greeks. 292 years after everybody was dead, you have all of these nations and more. I don't, I don't want to see that. How is it? Use your critical thinking. How is it possible? Wow. And with my last five seconds, the brother still ain't touched that. Hotel. He don't believe the Bible. Hotel. 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 There you go. Hotel, brother. Hotel, brother.